This short video will demonstrate how to effectively service the rubber shear springs on your Moride RL suspension system. For the purpose of showing the procedures involved in replacing the shear spring, we've removed the bus body and are focusing specifically on the area where you'll be servicing the rubber shear spring. Rubber shear springs should be periodically inspected for any tears or cracks. If a rubber spring exhibits a 3 inch long by 3 quarter inch deep crack or tear, the rubber spring should be replaced. This can be checked using a flat tool such as a putty knife. The putty knife can be used to probe the rubber spring in the affected area. If the knife can be inserted 3 quarter inch deep by at least 3 inches long, the spring rate of the spring is affected and should be replaced. Please note that it's normal to see the spring experience weather checking, which is small surface cracks in the rubber. Weather checking does not require a rubber spring to be replaced. Here are the tools you'll need for this procedure. A jack stand, a suitable floor jack, drift pins, a 9 16 and a 3 quarter inch combination end wrench, a 3 8 inch drive impact gun with 9 16 inch swivel socket, a half inch drive impact gun with a 3 quarter inch swivel socket, a 1 inch and a 1 and 1 8 inch socket, a porta power or more ride installation tool, new 3 8 by 7 8 inch long grade 8 bolts with center lock nuts, and a new more ride rubber shear spring. Before raising the rear of the vehicle, you need to block the front wheels. Next, position a floor jack underneath the more ride frame hanger. Raise the floor jack until the drive axle wheels are about 6 to 8 inches off the ground. Place jack stands under the frame rail and lower the floor jack, making sure that the tires are not touching the ground. They should be approximately 1 inch above the floor. The floor jack should then be placed under the differential throughout the process to support the weight of the axle. Notice how the floor jack and the safety stand are positioned out of the way so you have easy access to replace the rubber shear spring. If you follow the procedure as outlined in this video, it's not necessary to remove rear tires. Locate your more ride installation tool and make sure the threaded rod on the installation tool has a liberal coating of grease before continuing. Position the installation tool on the lobes of the spring carrier. Tighten the installation tool against the bottom of the leaf spring so that pressure is removed from the spacer sleeve or pad at the nose of the spring carrier. Using a 3 quarter inch open end wrench and a half by 3 quarter inch socket, Remove the bolt through the spacer sleeve at the nose of the spring carrier. After the spacer sleeve and bolt are removed from the nose of the spring carrier, release the installation tool by backing off the screw. Another way to relax the rubber shear spring is by using a porta power. If using a porta power, position the porta power between the lower portion of the spring carrier, approximately two and a half inches from the bottom and the rear of the axle seat. Pump the porta power so that the pressure is removed from the spacer sleeve or pad and remove the half inch nut, bolt, and spacer sleeve or pad. Remove the porta power. With the installation tool or porta power removed, the axle supported by the floor jack and the frame firmly supported by the safety stand, the rubber shear spring should be completely relaxed and you can begin removing the 3 8 inch nuts and bolts which are securing the rubber shear spring to the spring carrier and the frame hanger. Be sure to note the holes that the rubber spring assembly is bolted into for reinstallation. After you've removed the eight bolts securing the rubber shear spring, you can slide the defective rubber shear spring out of position. Position the new rubber shear spring between the frame hanger and the spring carrier. Notice that the offset of the rubber shear spring is higher towards the rear of the coach or at the frame hanger position. Line up the holes on the shear spring with the holes on the spring carrier and frame hanger. 
it may be helpful to raise or lower the differential slightly to properly align the new shear spring. You may want to use drift pins or alignment pins to correctly position the rubber shear spring to the frame hanger. With drift pins inserted, you can begin installing the other bolts into location. Be sure to use the new hardware you received with the rubber shear spring kit. Remove the drift pins and install the bolts in the holes. Do not tighten the nuts at this time. It'll make installation of the nuts and bolts on the spring carrier easier. Repeat this procedure to secure the shear spring to the spring carrier. Vice grips may be used to position the shear spring to ease installation of the nuts and bolts. Once all eight nuts and bolts are in position and hand tightened, tighten the eight nuts and bolts to proper torque. Remove vice grips. Reposition your installation tool onto the lobes of the spring carrier and run the threaded rod tight against the bottom of the leaf spring. Use caution when pulling the nose of the spring carrier down so that the carrier arms do not get caught on the top side of the leaf spring. This could cause damage to the spring carrier. Tighten the installation tool until the nose of the spring carrier is below the bottom of the leaf spring. At this point, reinstall the spacer sleeve and the half-inch bolt and nut at the nose of the carrier. Release the installation tool. Or, if you're using a porta power, simply reverse the porta power steps. Place the floor jack under the frame hanger and lift the vehicle off the jack stands and remove the jack stands. Now the vehicle can be lowered to the ground. Perform a final hardware check to ensure that all hardware has been tightened to proper torque specification.